So um, in this video, I'm going to go ahead and explain on how you can get your Class A CDL. Uh, in my last video, I mentioned that I was a truck driver, and um, I, whenever people find this out, they tend to want to know, you know, well, how do you become a truck driver? How do you get your CDL? And uh, throughout this video, I want to go ahead and clear up, go ahead and tell you the two main methods on how to get your CDL, and um, specifically a Class A, and uh, from there the process of getting your getting going through the testing to get your class A. So um, the, as a bit of a background of myself, um, I became a truck driver in 2017. I have roughly around three years of experience over the road uh, pulling reefer loads and uh, dry van loads. Um, and I've worked throughout majority of the 48 states already. Um, with that, I'm gonna go ahead and go into the first method. The, the first method um, that it's which is by far the most common method that people tend to go through is through mega carriers uh, in truck driving mega carriers are it's basically a term that refers to a large-scale carrier um, you've seen a lot of them uh, the biggest one out there would probably be Swift another one is CR England you also have Stevens Transport CRST it, the list kind of goes on from there um, the main the, the two main things that are what brings in the appeal for this is that you're starting your uh, career off with a job, but also the other thing that's advertised about it is that it is free training. Uh, the thing, the reality of the situation though is that the training is not free. Um, the way it works is uh, when you go to these driving academies to the mega carriers, they'll lock you in a loan between eight to ten thousand uh, dollars. There's no interest to these loans, so it's not going to rise up. Um, but uh, once you go ahead and get your CDL and you start working for this for the for your carrier, uh, you'll go ahead and start paying that off with your paychecks throughout every week. Uh, the thing to keep in mind with this as well is if you uh, decide to leave your carrier or you get terminated, you will uh, have to pay the difference off. Um, in a lot of cases, they kind of want you to pay up front. Others, though, depending on the situation, are willing to go ahead and work out a payment plan with you. Um, when it comes to these loans, however, though, um, you'll hear uh, a lot of crazy things from debt collectors, like they say, if you don't pay your loan, they'll take your license away and all these other things, And which, when it comes to a Class A CDL, they can't do that. Um, legally, that's, that license is yours. That is your driver's license. That is your driver's license, so they can't touch it. However, though, this is an actual loan that does apply to your credit. So if you um, go ahead and leave and decide not to pay the loan back, it will negatively affect your credit. And um, it's going to negatively affect your credit score, which um, if you're not really concerned about that, that's one thing. But if you're looking to start up your own business, let's say, uh, a lot of people tend to want to go ahead and become uh, owner operators and get their own authority. Uh, that's something they wanna, you want to keep in mind. Um, the other method, and this is the second one, which I think would be the better one for most people, is going through a proper trucking school. Now, the main thing with uh, trucking schools, is, like a proper trucking school, is going to be that they will take their time with um, your training, meaning that they'll go ahead and make sure you understand all the basics on how to properly back in, how to approach safety situations, like let's say you see an accident, or um, a construction site where they have, they have to direct traffic and whatnot, they'll walk you through all those things. Uh, the other thing too, and it's just something I, I've seen a lot, is that there's a lot more higher quality drivers coming out of tr those proper trucking schools as opposed to mega carriers. So um, if you want to have want to start your career out with a lot better skill set, look for a trucking school, like an actual one. Um, the other thing too with these guys is they, pen, they tend to pay uh, or require you that you pay a lot less. So usually they'll charge you anywhere from uh, four to six thousand dollars in a in a student loan, but um, they're not going to charge you up front for it. Uh, they understand that it takes a while to find a job within the industry, so they'll give you um, a bit of a grace period right there to go ahead and start looking for a job. And then once you start working, they'll go ahead. You can go ahead and start paying the, the loan back. Oh, and uh, another thing too with this is that um, you will have a lot much more uh, freedom and um, 
freedom of movement within the industry. Um, it's not going to be as a big of an issue for you to move around finding what carrier actually best suits you as opposed to starting out with a mega carrier directly and getting your CDL through them, which you know tends to slow that process down a bit. Now for the actual process of getting your Class A CDL. So within your first week of training, they will begin uh, having you study and begin testing for your CLP. Now what a CLP is, it is a permit that's designed or basically gives you the, the legal clearance to go ahead and um, be able to operate the vehicle, uh, the CMV in question, the tractor trailer, uh, and learning how to actually properly back it, operate on the road and everything else. Um, once you get your CLP, uh, from there you're going to go ahead and actually begin your actual training and learning how to back the vehicle in, how to properly pre-trip it, uh, how to operate it, you know, on local roads and whatnot. And, oh, excuse me, um, usually that takes about a month or so, uh, unless you have like insane talent, you can get it like right there. Uh, it, it tends to take about a month. Um, after that month, they'll go ahead and test you. Uh, the way the test works is there's three portions to it. There's a um, there's pre-trip, then you have the backing portion, and then finally your road test. Now, um, the thing to keep in mind with the test in of itself is that um, if you fail one portion, so let's say you fail pre-trip, you will not be allowed to take your backing or road test. They will not allow it at all. You have to complete that first portion first, and you only get three tries. So... Um, from there, well, what with the pre-trip section, it's going to be you. It's basically what a pre-trip is. Basically, is they're covering you're do, you're doing your daily inspection of the vehicle. So you have to understand how to um, properly examine the whole vehicle, make sure everything's running right, make, making sure all your uh, your lights are working properly, making sure all the um, the turn signals are working properly, making sure there are no uh, hanging parts that there's no flat tires no damage whatsoever anywhere you know the list goes on oh, excuse me the next portion will be um covering uh your backing now the backing test tends to vary from state to state because not every uh, state requires you to have the same backing skills so one example would be that in texas where i got my license at is that you're required to know how to back in a, or parallel park a, tra a tractor trailer. Uh, not every state requires you to know how to do a parallel park. So if you're looking to go with a mega carrier and they, that said carrier wants you to go to a certain school, um, keep that in mind as well. Um, with my test, uh, they had me do a straight line back, an offset, and then finally the parallel park. Um, after that, your final portion of the test will be the road test. Um, and all you're doing there is just driving the vehicle through local roads. Uh, from there, you're demonstrating, you know, how, that you understand how to properly control the vehicle, that you understand your spacing, how to keep a following distance, how to make turns into very tight areas as well. Um, one, one term you're going to probably hear quite a bit is splitting the lane, which um, you're basically taking up two lanes in order to compensate for the size of the vehicle to make a really tight turn. Um, you know, and this is, uh, you know, th these are things you need to keep in mind when you're going through the process. Um, one other thing I want to mention as well, and this is something I kind of recently remember to bring up is, uh, what kind of truck you're actually driving. And by that, I mean, what's the transmission? Um, you're going to typically see in train, the training phase is going to be either a 10 speed, uh, manual or an, autom an automatic. Now, the reason why that's important is because if you test in an automatic truck, um, you'll get what is, if you're testing in an automatic truck, you get an automatic restriction. What that restriction means is that legally you are only allowed to drive automatic trucks. Um, that in of itself is kind of a double-edged sword because yes, you get to drive a much more easier to handle vehicle but at the same time, though, it does limit somewhat your movement within the industry and in that you won't be able to do certain types of jobs. Like as far as I'm aware, um, one of the highest paying jobs is uh, oversized loads. And I don't think I've ever seen a automatic truck out there. So, I mean, if, if you have seen one, by all means, go for it. But as far as I'm aware, there's no 
uh, automatic um, oversized loads out there. Uh, beyond that, though, and sorry about the yawning. I'm a little tired right now. <laughs> uh, beyond that, though, I mean, that's about it. Um, I'll probably do some, I'm going to probably do another video at some point on something else. I haven't really figured out the topic yet. Um, the the main focus of the channel is still going to be MMA, but I would like to bring in trucking every once in a while for anyone that's interested in trying to get in the profession and, you know, looking to start a new career and whatnot. So uh, if you have anything else or if you have any interest at all that you want to add to it, um, go ahead and just please comment below. Um, uh, and if this is uh, some content you're interested, uh, please like and subscribe and ring the bell for notifications. Um, I'll do my best to try and get more content out for you. So thank you.